Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Momentum Lab. I'm Shekhar. This is the fifth episode in our factor investing series. So far, we have covered about value as a factor, and from now on, we're going to discuss about low volatility. In this episode, we'll talk about two things. One, we'll discuss what is the uh, methodology in which a low vol factor is constructed. We'll also talk about its origin, and we'll also going to show what are the different options that are available for Indian investors to take exposure to low vol as a factor. There are two major indices in India, NSE and BSE, and each of them have uh, versions or variants of low vol uh, indices. So we'll be talking about them as well. So let's get into the video. So the pioneer of low vol investing is Pim Van Vlei. He's a Dutch fund manager of uh, Rubico Asset Management. Uh, Pim Van Vlei has written a book called as High Returns from Low Risk: A Remarkable Stock Market Paradox. In this book, he delves deeper into the low vol indexing. a low vol style of investing where he has shown uh, uh, the back tested results of low vol performing better than the pure benchmark indices in uh, in, a, in a sufficiently large time frame i think is taken from 1920s onwards till 2010 uh, in the us market and is also compared in the european market as well the other remarkable aspect of uh, this book is that he also uh, mentions a different style that he has chosen called as conservative formula where he not just combines low vol but also adds momentum and uh, value and calls it as conservative formula this amalgamation of different factors also known as the multi factor approach gives a an, uh, gives a superior returns as compared to a single uh, single factor uh, index in india also there have been quite a fund, uh, quite a few fund managers in mutual fund as well as in the pms space who have been using a similar kind of uh, investment approach now if you go back uh, to the research that uh, pim van vlei uh, uh, alludes to he says that uh, even he has shown that the uh, low vol form of investing has statistically beaten the benchmark uh, s&p 500 for the last 8 years and uh, this is not something new that he has discovered in fact a similar research was already done in the year 1976 by robert hogan but he is the one who has propagated this idea of low vol investing by actually putting the money behind this thought so we must appreciate the practitioners who actually uh, had the courage to invest the money not the not just their the fund that they are running into an idea that they uh, believe into and that's when when you actually the in practitioners uh, Uh, take an idea and bring to fruition uh, that's when the idea actually gets uh, manifold multiplied and uh, now uh, low vol is a uh, one of the prominent factors considered considered even in india also there have been lot of uh, research papers done uh, in the indian context also to show the efficacy of uh, low vol investing so i'll be sharing a couple of uh, research papers in the youtube description you can take a look one am- one amongst them is the research paper written by mr rajan raju nanish telly where they have done a detailed analysis of how low vol investing has beat in the uh, benchmark indices of uh, bse 100 and nse 100 So the advantages of low vol apart from beating the index usually is that uh, it has a relatively lower drawdown and a quicker uh, recovery rate so that's the uh, academic uh, point of view now let's see what all different options are there for the indian investors in the uh, indian market if one were to take the exposure so obviously you can do it diy that is one style of uh, investing or taking exposure to low vol factor the other way is to uh, index invest in an index fund which uh tracks uh, which or which mimics closely the this low vol factor so there are uh, two major indices nse and bse i'm going to cover nse uh, maybe later i'll also cover bse uh, in bse there is only one uh, low vol index but uh, in nse there are three low vol indices so i'm going to briefly touch upon the methodology in which these indices are constructed so it will also be helpful for the diy investors who if you were if you were to uh, construct a low vol portfolio uh, by yourself so we'll we'll see what are the three different uh, indices uh, their styles their advantages or disadvantages and uh, uh, wrap it up by showing a quick demo of how do you calculate uh, standard deviation and from there uh, come up with uh, volatility of a particular stock so the first index that is uh, available in nsc is called as nifty 100 low vol 50 this uh, takes the top 300 stocks in the nsc universe and then constructs the uh, low vol index the second is nifty 100 low vol 30 as the name itself says it is a large cap focused low vol uh, uh, index and then we have nifty 500 low vol 50 this is the broad market includes large cap mid cap small cap and picks the top 50 stocks based on the uh, volatility factor now let's start with the first uh, index which is nifty low volatility 50 it's a pure play pure play low vol index so what it does is it takes the top 300 nse listed stocks by market cap and then it picks top 50 stocks 
based on the previous one year's volatility volatility is nothing but uh, measured as the standard deviation of daily returns so let me show how do you calculate standard deviation of daily returns for a particular stock or an in index and uh, then it will be easier to uh, understand so let's go to google sheets so what i'm going to do is let me show this so we have uh, i've taken nifty bees of uh, last one year's returns uh, you can use this google finance formula and i've got the daily prices of daily navies of uh, nifty bees since 2024 july 1 till 2025 july 3rd then what i did i calculated the daily percentage movement of the nav so you divide the current price by yesterday's price minus 1 so that gives the daily uh, daily uh, returns how much is it moving up or down now since we got the daily returns of a, of this nifty bees let's just quickly populate and see so this is how it usually fluctuates the daily returns sometimes they go up sometimes they go down and that's how they usually tend to uh, be so you see a spikes of high peaks of volatility where it has gone below by 3% on one day and uh, on another day has gone up by 4% now if we were to quantify this bumpiness or zigzagness uh, then we use what we call as the standard deviation to measure the low volatility so how do you measure this low volatility you calculate the formula uh, equal to std ev and select the entire range so 0.81% is its daily standard uh, deviation now since we want to analyze this number we are more interested in a yearly basis so we are going to analyze this by multiplying uh, the square root of 252 252 is because of the number of trading days in a year which is usually 252 so that's what we get as the uh, standard deviation or put simply volatility so this volatility is 12.78% of nifty bees in the last one year similarly you can calculate the volatility for different indices different stocks and come up with a particular metric for each of them and then finally you can rank them so that's what is being done uh, in this index also if you see the nifty uh, low volatility 50 they have taken the top 10 indices stocks uh, they've calculated the uh, standard deviation of daily returns and come up with uh, the volatility on an analyzed basis for each stock so you get 300 records and then you finally sort by them so that's the first step of sorting all the 300 stocks based on uh, volatility and picking the top 50 stocks which are having least volatility now the second step is how do we allocate weightages to each of these 50 stocks a simpler way would have been to give equal weightage to all 50 stocks making uh, 2% each but that's not how it is done in this index so this index does allocation of weights to each stock based on risk parity or inverse volatility weighting method so if you have heard these terms we have actually shown you in one of our uh, videos called as adaptive asset allocation like how do you uh, do risk parity weighted or inverse volatility weighted between different asset classes while uh, constructing an asset allocation portfolio so a similar concept a same concept in fact exactly replica of that is being done in this index also so the advantage of inverse volatility weighting or risk parity is that you not only uh, give uh, a higher weightage to those stocks which are having very low volatile but also you end up giving less weightage to those stocks which are relatively higher volatile so even uh, when you're sorting the 50 stocks based on low volatility some of the stocks which are let's say in the top ranks might be having a very low volatile of let's say 6% or 7% and at the bottom the stocks might be at let's say 18% 20% so while it is not prudent to allocate equal weightage let's say 6% volatility stock and 18% volatility stock so what they do is they do a risk parity and give a higher weightage to uh, the lower stocks even within the top 50 selected so this way it is a pure uh, low wall factor which is uh, uh, basing the entire decision of selection as well as allocation uh, based on uh, volatility so if you want to click quickly show how this is uh, being done by nse you can check their uh, methodology so this is how the constant weighting is done it is 1 divided by volatility of that particular stock whole divided by the summation of uh, inverse volatilities of all the stocks in the top 50 selected now let's go back to our uh, deck and see what is the next index the next index is nifty 100 low wall 30 this is a pure large cap shield so it works the same way as what we have seen uh in uh, nifty 100 low wall 50 which is a top 
300 universe but here it is only restricted to large cap of nifty 100 and the mechanism of picking the top 30 is also same you sort all the stocks based on uh, daily standard deviation or low volatility pick the top 30 stocks which are least volatile and within that 30 allocate using inverse volatility so the only uh, difference being is that there's a max capping weightage of 3% for illiquid stocks and uh, the uh, anyhow the universe is only top 100 the rebalancing frequency for uh, this index as well as for the previous index is done quarterly so every quarterly you check whether some of the stocks uh, are exhibiting higher volatility if they are in fact exhibiting higher volatility then what they do is they exit those stocks and pick new stocks which are uh, having uh, low volatility characteristics now for this they've put a, a worst strength held condition of uh, 2x meaning let's say in the nifty 100 low wall 50 out of 300 they sort uh, top 50 right and next quarter let's say they want to do the same exercise they sort uh, the stocks they get the list of stocks let's say a stock which is in the top 50 uh, for example a 47th rank stock has moved to 58 so in the next quarter rebalance they actually don't kick out that 58th position stock they let it be if it is still the worst rank held of 100 so that is the meaning of 2x so a 50 uh, holding a portfolio in the nifty low all 50 has a worst rank held of 100 so only if a stock goes in the volatility ranking below 100 then that stock is kicked out and a new stock which is in the top 50 is picked and the process is repeated every uh, quarterly same is the case with uh, nifty 100 low all 30 uh, again the worst rank held is here 2x which is 60 so if a stock only goes below the rank of 60 in terms of volatility only then it is kicked out and a new stock which is in the top 30 is picked so that is the mechanism in which this index is constructed so let's take a look at the last index in the low wall uh, offering which is nifty 500 low wall 50. so there is one difference or uniqueness in this index yes the first part of selecting the top 50 stocks based on uh, uh, the low wall that is common you pick the top 50 stocks based on the low volatility but the weightages are not only given based on the inverse volatility but also multiplied by the market cap so it is a combination of market cap and low volatility factor so it is not sufficient that a stock just has a low volatility but it should also have a higher market cap to get a higher weightage in this index if you think about it the reason this is done is because if let's say in a universe of 500 stocks they are choosing top 50 stocks based on low one now the 500 nifty uh, nsc 500 can be broken down into large cap 100 and mid small cap 400 if you were to actually give an equal weightage of stocks or representation between between these two indices then 10 stocks from large cap have to be picked and 40 from uh, mid small cap have to be picked now if you see the problem in the 50 stock uh, index 40 stocks are being represented by mid and small cap which are mostly illiquid very low volume and high uh, impact costs would be there in these uh, uh, low trading mid and small cap stocks which is not the case with the large cap stocks so one way to avoid this bias is to give a higher weightage to stocks coming from the large cap now how do you inculcate this bias this bias can be avoided by multiplying the volatility score with the market cap so automatically the large cap stocks even though they might be few in number but their weightage representation will be high the advantage of this is that the nifty 500 low wall 50 is a more liquidable and tradable instrument rather than being purely academic if you see the nifty nifty low wall 50 is purely academic it doesn't even take the practical considerations of whether the stock is tradable non-tradable uh, whether it has liquidity or doesn't have all that it doesn't uh, bother it just purely takes uh, only low wall as a factor and sorts the stocks and says invest in them nifty 100 low wall 30 because of its definition being a large cap driven uh, index the problem of uh, the uh, picking stocks which are uh, less tradable less frequently tradable low liquidity is avoided whereas in the case of nifty 500 low, low wall 50 since the universe is large it has the possibility that unnecessarily it might give weightage to stocks in the bottom which are not actually tradable which have a higher tracking error higher uh, uh, impact cost etc so that's why the weighting mechanism combines the volatility as well as the market cap 
this rebalancing is done uh, semiannually that is june and december unlike the previous uh, indices and same the worst rank held is again 200 year uh, sorry 2x that is 100 year so if a stock goes below uh, rank of 100 only then it is kicked out and the new stock is picked based on the low volatility so to quickly summarize these three indices uh, we have nifty low wall 50 which takes the universe of top 300 nifty 100 low wall 30 takes the universe of uh, nifty 100 nifty 500 low wall 50 takes the universe of 50 uh nifty low wall 50 and nifty 500 low wall 50 they have total 50 stocks in that index and nifty 100 low wall 30 has 30 both uh, the nifty low wall 50 and nifty 100 low wall 30 are inverse low volatility weighted whereas the nifty 500 low wall 50 is a combination of inverse low volatility versus the market cap and if you have to derive a particular flavor of what each of these indices uh, stand for the nifty low wall 50 is purely academic and uh, it might not be practically feasible and, and i think that's the reason there is no etf or a mutual fund which is tracking this particular index there are etfs and mutual funds plenty which are tracking these two indices nifty 100 low wall 30 nifty 500 low wall 50 nifty 500 low wall 50 is practically possible balanced and broad based and same is the case with nifty 100 low wall 30 it is also purely liquid uh, and also uh, uh, takes the low wall exposure so that's the uh, overview of different indices that are available in india Uh, especially in the low wall factor and we have also shown uh, how each of these indices uh, differ in its methodology and construction we also shown uh, how do you calculate low volatility for a particular stock or an index uh, using the google sheet so in the next video we'll compare among these three which one does be- uh, well and how do they perform against the benchmarks so like uh, we discussed in our previous videos of value we're going to use our uh, back testing tool to show uh, to compare uh, these uh, indices against their respective benchmarks let's say nifty 100 low wall 30 will compare it with nifty 100 nifty 500 low wall 50 will compare it with nifty 500 and nifty low wall 50 maybe we'll again compare it with uh, nifty 500 and also we'll compare one amongst each other and see which one does well on different metrics like returns uh, volatility uh, drawdowns etc all right that's all uh, from uh, Uh, our site in this video i will also be sharing the link of the book that i mentioned in the youtube description if someone is interested please go ahead and uh, read it it's a light read by the way not uh, heavy thank you have a nice day bye